Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India I am Mahesh Chandar. I am Principal Scientist of Indian Council of Agriculture Research, currently working at Indian Veterinary Research Institute. Today I will be discussing about organic agriculture, what it is, why it is done, the evolution of organic agriculture and its importance. So let us see evolution of life, how life evolved in this planet. Life evolved out of natural processes, everything was available in nature and then, then it pros, progressed to hunting gathering life. You must have heard initially our ancestors in the beginning they were they used to wander around in nature and whatever plant material they used to get, whatever animal they used to get, they used to eat it because and then the, this phase of life was called hunting gathering and that was way of life, wandering, eating whatever was available in nature. Then slowly, slowly we move to the process of settling down. So the people start reduce their wandering, wanderness and they start, they started with settling their life. They started things at one static place rather than moving around all the places. So in that process of settling down, so what happened later on, they started growing plants for the, as a, their food and they started rearing later on animal life and then what happens once they started settling down and then this, this led to the population growth. So in, initially the population was not that much. So when they started settling down and then population started multiplying. So this emergence of settled life with raising of crops and animals. So when they were living settled life, they stopped wandering around and then they start living at one place and that was, the, for that it was required that they should raise, grow some crops and they should raise some animals. They started rather than finding out, out going away here and there these plant material, they started growing these plants for their own consumption and raising some animals for, as a food for their survival. So then earlier it was what was available in nature, they were eating it, then they started growing the same things for their food. Then they started giving natural interventions. So for example, if we are growing some crop or raising some, some livestock, crop also for its growth needs some kind of a uh, booster so that they can be, they can be grow, they can be grown well and they can grow, be grown health, uh, healthy and also for livestock they also livestock or animals they also needed food they will eat food something to eat food and to be healthier so they at that time since not synthetic or chemical alternatives were available and they were giving natural interventions to increase or the boost the productivity of the plant material whatever they were growing and the whatever livestock they were raising they were giving natural interventions for their good health for the good health of the plant and good health of the animals which they were rearing. This we call natural interventions, what was available in nature, what was available in nature they were providing to the crops or as well as to livestock. But what happened as the population was growing up, then it was population was increasing, the food requirements was also increasing. So then they, they what they because the population growth it need to be fed, fed and then for that we need more food. So we need it, so more food need to be produced that led to the introduction of the chemicals into agriculture because we need nitro nitrogen fertilizer, phosphate, potassium and several other uh, chemical uh, fertilizers, plant protectants were needed and uh, weed manage for weed management, weedicides were required. So the people started working on inputs for the agriculture and also for raising livestock. These were the artificial one, chemical one and the man-made. They were not naturally available in the environment. So they started producing these chemical 
for the health of the crops, but for the and the health of the animals and for their improving the productivity of the crop and animals. So, these chemicals were in being introduced and then what they were developed and this intervention led to the increase of the food production. Then that what happened when we introduced chemicals into agriculture that led to the more food production, that led to the food self sufficiency. So, now we have almost reached to the food self sufficiency level because of the chemicals. In India for example, because after the green revolution in 1960s, before that chemicals are not used in agriculture, but after 1965 there was more intensive drive for use of chemicals into agriculture that phase we call green revolution agriculture. Green revolution agriculture needed improved seed, chemical fertilizer, pesticides, weedicides and they were introduced in agriculture which led to the more production and self sufficiency in many of the food uh, we consume, maybe rice, wheat and other sugar cane and many other crops what we need for ourselves in the vegetables. So, because of the chemicals the food production enhanced so in a multiple uh, ways. So, and then there was more productivity, more production and there was a self sufficiency. But what happened because of this self sufficiency it is there, it is fine that now we have enough to eat with us, but what is happening because of the chemicals, chemicals are polluting the environment and then also chemicals are they are going they are uh, consuming, we are also consuming these chemicals through our foods what we are growing because these chemical fertilizers as a residue also pesticide residue we are consuming that is having impact on our health adverse impact and that is polluting the environment and, animal and uh, the environment is also getting polluted and that these chemicals are leaching down into the water water and then water what we are drinking that is also getting polluted. These chemicals are playing havoc with human health now because of the irresponsible and uh, abundant use of the chemicals in agriculture, human health, animal health and the health of the environment on the whole is getting affected. This food security is of course assured, but what about the environment which is having causing adverse effect on human health for that these people started searching the alternatives. If the chemical oriented agriculture is affecting human health then or animal health what we, what alternatives are there. So, it then in that search people found out that we can have still more production by going back to the picking up the things from our ancestors when they were giving natural interventions for crop and animal productivity. So, we started calling it organic agriculture when the chemicals are being largely avoided from the agriculture and animal production systems. So, now people slowly slowly people are realizing that when there are adverse effect of chemicals in agriculture which affects human and animal health why not to go look for the alternatives. So, then uh, the organic agriculture being is being seen as a good alternative to chemical agriculture. So, now you would be interested in what is actually organic agriculture? A system of agriculture production which relies on site eco ecosystem based management of the uh, crop and then also of animals rather than externally purchased agricultural inputs, chemicals or uh, feeds which are uh, laced with chemicals like uh, then then no use of antibiotics no use of chemical fertilizers, but site specific agronomic interventions and crop interventions which are more natural and not used uh, based on the chemicals. So, um, it is more it gives more emphasis on the management practices rather than the chemicals. It is a holistic production management system which promotes and enhances a agro ecosystem health including biodiversity, biological cycles and soil biological activity. It emphasizes the use of management practices in preference to the use of off farm inputs, off farm inputs taking into account that regional conditions require locally adapted systems. This is accomplished by using where possible agronomic, biological and mechanical methods as opposed to using synthetic materials to fulfill any specific function within the system. It is done as per the written standards and guidelines. 
they are often when we are going for organic agriculture production. So, it has a written standards and guidelines how to do it and that is subject to audit labeled certified and marketed as organic product. So, it means that when the conventional agriculture was there, there were no written guidelines how to do it. People were using buying chemicals from the market and other inputs from the market, they were applying on the crops. So, but in case of organic agriculture, if you want to market your product as organic agriculture product, it is certified organic agriculture project, it has to be done as per the reason in, in the compliance of the standards and there are guidelines for doing so. There are four principles of organic agriculture. Organic farming involves complex diverse systems with varied crop rotation and other soil building practices, animal integration and ecosystem preservation well defined under the four principles of organic farming. The first principle of organic farming is principle of health. It should avoid the use of fertilizers, pesticides, and animal drugs, food additives that may have adverse health effect. The principle of health, this is in organic agriculture, health is human and animal health is given top uh, importance, prime importance that we have to see that whatever agriculture we are following, uh, practicing, it should take care of human health. Second principle of organic agriculture is principles of ec ecology. Principle of ecology it should be based on the living ecological systems and cycles, work with them, emulate them and help sustain them. So, it means that when we are raising crops and for ourselves and animals are also there, we have to see that it has to strike a balance between everybody's need, so that we are not compromising anyone's interests. So, we, we should not in the greed for our own food, we should not affect other ecological, ecological practices, but we have to live in the harmony with the natural nature. And third principle is fairness, we have to be very fair, we, we cannot afford to be unfair in organic production system, including the wage equality between gender, there should not be any difference between labor wages to hum, uh, woman labor or male labor and something like that or child labor is also not used in organic agriculture. It should build on relationship that ensure fairness with regard to common environment and life processes. And the fourth principle of organic agriculture is principle of care. It should be managed in a precautionary manner and to protect the health and well-being of current and future generations and the environment. We should not think that we are living today, we have to produce for today's need. What about the future generation? We should not over exploit natural resources, we have to see that. Say for example, if we have to cut a tree, we have to also think about planting more trees for the future generations. If we keep exploiting the natural resources for our own needs or for the current need, what about the future? We have to take care of the interest of the coming generations, we have to think about them and then we have to take due care for this. Now, we have to talk a little bit about uh, organic animal husbandry, what, take, what is organic animal husbandry. So, organic agriculture is one thing, it is a system of livestock production that promotes the use of organic and biodegradable inputs from the ecosystem, deliberately avoiding the use of synthetic inputs such as drugs, feed additives and genetically engineered breeding inputs while ensuring the welfare of animals. So, animal welfare is very important in organic animal husbandry. It is not that animal is animal is for producing food for human beings and we should not be so much careful about animals, it should not be. So, we have to look for the welfare of animal because the animals are giving food to us. So, also we should not give them some kind, kind of a uh, chemicals to them, so that and then we have to use. Uh, this now we should not uh, we should not use synthetic input like drugs, feed additives, and genetically engineered breeding inputs. So that is very important. It follows the principle and practices of organic farming. So whatever principle and practices we follow in case of organic agriculture crop production, so these same principles are applies to organic animal husbandry also when we are rearing animals for it. So a farmer who would like to convert from conventional agriculture, I mean from the chemical agriculture. So, he has to organic production should be familiar with the principle of organic farming standards, guidelines and package of practices. Say for example, if I am a conventional farmer today, 
using all chemicals and market purchase inputs like pesticides. So, if I want to switch over to organic agriculture, then we have to we have to follow organic production guidelines and standards. Then only I can switch over to to, to organic uh, organic production from conventional. And there is a conversion period. So that is usually three years. Say for example, today I am uh, chemical oriented uh, agriculture. I am doing so conventional agriculture. I am doing, and I get the idea that I should switch over to organic agriculture. Then I have to. Uh, it 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 takes usually three years. So, in three years time, I do not use chemicals into my farm and also we do not use synthetic uh, fertilizers or pesticides in our crops for three years that period is called conversion period. So, th then only uh, we are eligible for the, uh, this organic agriculture. So, let us see what is the aim of organic farming and that is to grow crops which are chemical free and that are healthy for environment. And then in organic agriculture, improving circulatory practices is very important. So, you would like to know what are the circulatory practices. So, you see soil is the very fundamental thing in case of organic agriculture. Everything is start from the soil. Soil has to be very healthy. So, how to make soil healthy? So, we have to avoid all kind of chemical interventions into the soil. So, if you are not using chemical fertilizers, if you are not using pesticides, weedicides, but rather than we are working for the good health of the soil. You might have heard nowadays we are talking of compost, vermicompost and soil, soil healthy uh, soil management practices are there. They are well documented and then this takes care of the good health of the soil. So, assumption is that what happens if soil is healthy? So, if soil is healthy, so then the plant which we, it is growing on this soil, so it will be also healthy. If this is soil is not healthy, the, the plant growing on this soil will not be healthy. It will be the poor in growth or it will be having effect of the pollution. So, polluted soil will lead to the polluted plant growth. It will, it will have adverse effect of the chemicals on that. So, now if soil is healthy, plant and whatever crops we are growing on that soil. So, it will be consumed by human being as well as by the livestock or and the animals which we are being maintained by the, the, the same farm. If animal is consuming healthy plant and then it is healthy plant being consumed by animals, animal will also be healthy and it will also provide cow dung for example. So, it will be turned into cattle manure, farmyard manure, it will be recycled into the soil and it will contribute towards the soil health. So, this is a circulatory practices which are encouraged under the organic systems. So, we have to look into that how we can enhance a circulatory practices. Now, if you look at the food production system which are the new requirements of the food production system, quality. Quality is number one parameter. You now, might have seen nowadays we have become more quality conscious. We are reading the labels on the food products. So, date of manufacture, date of expiry and this kind of things and then how it has been produced. So, we are reading, started reading the labels in the food products. So, then if this is a quality is number one and then we are also nowadays we are talking about the climate. So, climate uh, climate change is nowadays uh, being talked about a lot that it is climate is affected. Sometimes there are heavy rains and floods, sometimes there is drought and all these kind of things. So, we have to produce our food in a way that our climate is not adversely affected and the good climate has to be there. It helps, it, it, it improves the health of human as well as animals what we are rearing. And now, the food products what we are growing is to be, to be nutritive. It is not that the food what we have grown is, it is, is lacking in the nutritional property. Nowadays, we are also talking nutri nutrition sensitive agriculture means that the nutrition it should be nutritive not only it should fill our stomach, but it should contribute to our health by providing good nutrients. So, it should be rich in nutrients whatever we are uh, growing it should be nutritive. Food safety is another feature that. So, whatever food we are eating that it should be safe, it should be for the safety. So, it should take care of the human as well as animal safety and it should be efficient. 
So, efficient means less input used and the output is more. So, then and then it should be delivered. Then the animal welfare is a very important consideration in the organic agriculture or animal husbandry. So, now why we are doing all these things globally? We, when we are producing crops or animals, so it, it, it should be it should be for our consumption. So, and also surplus to be exported. So, what is happening if we are not producing that nutritious food, nutritive food within our own country, then we may have to import from outside. So, many countries are rich because they are able to export their manufactured product, agriculture product to other countries where these products are lacking in. So, now if we are not producing healthy products within the country, those sections of the society who are health oriented, those who are health conscious, they will be bound to import these products from the other countries. So, we have to take note of this and then produce. Now, if you look at shopping malls now, is talking organic animal products, organic food products uh, that includes animal products as well. So, gradually, gradually as the human beings are becoming quality conscious, the markets are also being flooded with the quality food products and the quality food products sometime it is relates with the organic products. Organic products are being considered as the high quality products. Such projects are labeled. So, you will not find you will not find any organic product which is not labeled well. So, in that level you see every who has produced it, who has certified it and there is a logo of the government of India for getting organic agriculture products. So, then it gives the all the information who has the, who is the producer and all these things. So, consumer after reading the label they become satisfied. So, all farm products so, they are properly labeled and they are the labels, uh, logos of the certification agencies into this and the marketing agency also. So, once the conformity with the organic standard has been verified, the product can be labeled as organic, label the standards with which it complies. So, it shows that the, when the label is there and the logo is certified organic logo is there, that gives the conf uh, confidence to the consumer that yet whatever they are eating, it is properly labeled. So, now what is happening? More and more number of consumers globally are asking for certified organic products. When there is demand for certified organic product, there has to be supply. Supply comes from where farmer produce the farm products. So, they will be supplying. So, so they need to be given technical advice how to do organic production products, how to go for organic production. They need technical advice accordingly they will produce and the produce farm produce produce in a certified organic production manner as per the production guidelines. So, if you look at the market you, you see the all organic products are flooded in the market now and, and that product that is increasing every year. So, then you uh, uh, day, day by day, so we are seeing the market full of organic food, food products, vegetables, fruits, cereal grains, nuts, spices. So, lot many project products are there. So, even if animal product like ghee, if you see the buttermilk and the meat products, they are properly labeled and in, in, the, in the containers you find uh, and in the tetra packs mil uh, milk certified organic milk that is that that is you can see now it is available in the market so now if you look at the globally the western countries and india also in the shopping malls so lot many food products so variety of food products are available which are certified organic which has been produced as per the guidelines of the organic production so organic markets in developed countries inspiring developing country producers so, initially this uh, organic production is started in the western countries, in the developed countries so where they started thinking about this one because they, they face first the adverse effect of the chemical use in agriculture. They saw the health adverse health effects of the chemical use in agriculture. They thought of why not to go back to our ancient practices and coupling with modern scientific practices so that the amical, chemicals can be reduce or eliminated from the agriculture production system. So, they also realize first the need of chemicals in agriculture, they introduce the chemicals and which enhance the agriculture productivity and the western countries they also realize first that there are adverse effect of chemicals on 
agriculture production, human health and animal health. So, now, so they started raising and the western the countries are producing lot of organic uh, products in Europe, in America, Australia and many countries and slowly this entered into Indian markets also. So, organic agriculture is it is we can say that this is for healthier human living. Organically produced food that are devoid of harmful chemicals or no harmful residues are good for human health. You can say that if our human health, we are consuming chemical free food, our health will be good. Our expenses on uh, our medicines for example, our health ex expenditure will go down because food is like medicine you know. So, when, when we are eating healthy food which is not laced with chemicals, so our health will be good, our expenses on uh, medicines and health, health care will be will, will go down by eating healthy food. So, we have to see that even if we have to pay a little bit extra for uh, the organic products, sometime organic products are 20 to 30 percent more the price of the conventional product products, people say that they are expensive, but if they see the adverse effect on their health of consuming chemical or chemical uh, uh, lace foods. So, then, then it is it offsets the if you look at if they are eating healthy food and paying extra money for that. So, their expenses are like to be less on their health care. So, some way that it is a balancing way. So, no harmful chemicals in food chain is good for human animal health and the environment. We have to take care of the environment as well. So, so you organic agriculture takes care of the environment. So, you see that when we are applying chemicals and, and chemicals are being produced in certain factories and that is uh, polluting the environment. You know, you know this uh, polluting uh, the gases are being produced and they are released in the environment in the process of the chemicals being produced, pesticide being produced, weedicide being produced. So, in case of antibiotics are being produced, say for example, if animals are consuming a lot of antibiotics and then allopathic medicines. These are as a residue may be passed on to human body. So, the, then the, the milk what we are consuming if is having antibiotic residues or other residues of the uh, drugs which we have fed to our animals that will pass on to the human in the form of the meat we are consuming or milk we are consuming. So, that will go to so, that it will adversely affect human body and then that will also environment the pollen. So, so, as I said, a healthier life means uh, less expenses on health care and then also reduce ground water pollution, soil degradation and good air quality. So, it is it is contributes air quality you know. So, when we are spraying pesticide on the crops for example. So, that pesticide being sprayed on the crops, it is also uh, affecting the air quality around. So, we are breathing uh, air and then we are inhaling this adverse the pollu uh, polluted air. So, polluted air has a lot of health if, uh, adverse effect on human health. We have to take care of this. So, and then reduced uh, ground water pollution when we are chemicals are being applied on the crops. So, that is that these chemicals are leaching to the uh, in the soil and reaching to the water and that water we are consuming. So, water we are consuming that has chemicals, soil is getting degraded you know in, in the in the soils of the main state where chemicals were used a lot of chemicals were used and then slowly slowly soil became so deteriorated soil quality, soil health got so much deteriorated over the year is they started with less use of chemicals because less chemical fertilizer use, but the soil started demanding more and more chemical fertilizer for the growth of the plant because soil quality deteriorated because of the application of the chemicals for year by year after year. So, air, uh, air quality deteriorated, soil health got deteriorated, ground water got polluted, a total environment got polluted because of the chemicals that is why it was thought that the alternatives should be looked into and organic agriculture was seen as it is being seen as a good and a sustainable alternative to the chemical based agriculture. Slowly, slowly the chemical based agriculture is being replaced by the organic agriculture. Now, 
we have started also talking about the natural farming. Natural farming as our ancestor used to give natural intervention for crop and animal production. So, we are going back to the ancient practices where there were no chemical, still people were surviving. People were surviving using natural intervention. Whatever was available in the nature that was being used and they were researching on the natural methods to grow crops or raise livestock. If a animal is sick or if a human being are sick, they used to use some plant material plant and they used to consume some decoction made of the plant material. So, now we call it herbal medicine sometime or we, ca we call allopathic medicine, uh, no, we call uh, this natural ma medicines. So, sometime Ayurvedic medicines we call. So, that kind of these are the human made from the whatever the products available in the nature rather than involving the chemical processes to develop the drugs. So, which are harmful, but the plant materials were being used earlier time and they used to give interventions from the whatever available material is available in the in the farm itself, whatever all available in the natural available and they were sometime very effective also. Now, we have there is a renewed interest into these plant based medicines and Ayurvedic medicines and then so, in China they call it Chinese traditional medicines. So, globally now their emphasis on even case of chemical fertilizers are being replaced by the bio fertilizers. So, bio fertilizers or the sometime bio pesticides also because animals are this if pests are affecting our crops there can be natural processes to manage the uh, the integrated pest management practices are there how the pest can be managed in a natural way. So, rather than using pesticide to kill the pesticide, so nature there are some natural uh, technique how to control. So, if there are uh, uh, worms in the inside the worms on the animals, so like uh, leaves and the ticks, so they are being controlled by the so material uh, medicines made of the natural products. So, these natural product plant based product are being applied on animals or they are being fed with these natural products. So, that the, uh, the worms inside the uh, animal and also in human being can be can be uh, killed finished and the problems related to because of these uh, ticks or some kind of a lice, lice and other uh, pests affecting the crops can be managed in a natural way. So, natural practices are being uh, promoted under organic production systems. So, because that is now we saw we, we started our life from the very in the wandering in the nature and then it started slowly slowly settling down and then we started rather than eating whatever is available we became and we the crops were evolved crops we used uh, uh, materials, nature, natural uh, materials which were available uh, from the nature, we started applying them on the crops to improve the productivity of the crops or the productivity of the animals. So, we found that thing in the nature itself. And then, then when we realize the human population has grown many fold, so we cannot sustain purely based on the natural products for the improving we need to we needed to improve crop productivity in a in a, in a, a multiple uh, times more to feed the huge expansion in the human population so when we when we uh, we are looking that human population has grown so much and natural uh, the processes cannot enhance the productivity as much as as the human need for their consumption so the chemicals were evolved so, chemicals were brought into practice and then we developed the pests, chemical fertilizers were developed and manufactured and then they were applied and the productivity went up. The productivity went up and then what happened later on, the, it, it made us food secure, food security was there. Now, people have started talking about the health security or nutrition security. Whatever we are growing, it should contribute to human health, it should contribute to animal health and it should contribute to the environment health. So, for that it was thought that chemicals cannot cannot be helpful in this matter. So, they are adversing the human effect and then there, the, there are many disease you know cancer and so many other disease which are increasing in number and that having a this is happening mostly because of the chemical use in agriculture or other chemical we are in we are 
uh, eating, consuming somehow one way or other. So, now then, then the, when we thought of the alternatives, we thought that then the that, that led to the emergence of the uh, organic agriculture or now we have started also copying a little bit advanced version of it when I say that in a way that in natural farming even these uh, bio fertilizers and all these kind of uh, this one and market purchase inputs are largely avoided. So, slowly slowly we are trying to be dependent on natural practices, natural interventions rather than the market purchase chemicals for growing crops and raising, raising animals. So, we believe that this is quite helpful and many people around the world are growing for this kind of uh, agriculture and that kind of this kind of agriculture if you look at. So, in the market is also slowly slowly developing for the organic products. So, we are having finding certified organic products in the market even if they are little bit expensive uh, premium uh, uh, prices. So, they are selling. So, people are saying that yes it is we, we are willing to pay extra if it is a healthier products. So, slowly slowly we are going for the consumption of the healthier product and organic products are considered to be healthier product. So, slowly people's choices are changing and they are they are going for the earlier market product if you look at so market. So, you will find more organic because farm to fork we call it if the, the way it is being farm and they are they are having all their documentation done that how they have produced the uh, uh, the crops or the vegetables and fruit and it is well documented and then it when it goes to market and if someone is eating that product in a restaurant or at his home if he want to see that where from this product is coming that could com complete chain of their uh, ch chain is there we traceability that product can be traced to its origin and one can see where it is being how it is being produced if you somebody want to uh, see chicken what he is eating in a restaurant if you want to say wow this ch chicken is being raised and a milk what he is consuming how that milk is being produced so he can visit that farm and production area so that is traceability is maintained in case of organic production one can go back and look into how the farm production is being done how the milk is being produced how chicken being raised and how crop being produced and fruits and vegetables are being produced one can look into himself and get satisfied that yes it is chemical free and healthy products being produced so that that is certified organic production so many people are now coming up for the organic farming because looking at the very lucrative market which is giving them good income also and also growing export market. So, people are uh, adopting organic products, uh, production practices and they are getting certified their farm and initially also for their own consumption they used to produce something without chemicals many farmers they used to produce something for the market and something for their own consumption. But slowly now when they have to market it as organic product they have to especially for export they have to get it certified by a accredited certification agency. So, unless it is certified by accredited certification agency their product cannot be marketed. There is another system of organic certification that is called participatory guarantee system PGS. So, PGS certified organic products are also available in the market, but the PGS certified organic products cannot be exported that is for the local consumption local market and for the domestic consumption PGS certified. In case of PCS certified there is a committee including the, the farmer and the local representatives and then these people they verify that this product is organic product. So, PGS, uh, PGS certification guidelines are also available and in India Ministry of Agriculture and Farmers Welfare they, uh, they support this uh, PGS. Uh, certification is in India Ministry of Commerce and Industry and especially APIDA Agriculture and Processed Food Products Export Development Authority it regulates national program on organic production and then it looks especially the export demand. So, uh, India is uh, exporting substantial amount of organic products to many different countries. So, because as the demand for the organic uh, uh, production and the consumption and export is growing up people are becoming more uh, more excited on organic products and especially youth and the new generation they are looking at the lucrative market for the organic products which many consumers are finding healthy for human life and this is good for animals animal welfare point of view and for the environment. 
So, there is a big push for organic production and the organic production is uh, going up everywhere in the world including in India as the consumer is becoming more sensitized, more uh, aware about health adverse health effect of the chemical waste agriculture. They are more thinking about the alternatives and organic farming is providing them and a very good alternative to the chemical based agriculture. Slowly we can see that in the future chemical based industry, chemical based agriculture will be replaced by the green agriculture that will be more healthier organic agriculture and the market for the bio fertilizers or the natural fertilizers, market for the compost, vermicompost and other uh, plant based material to be used for the animal production or agriculture or crop production or fruit and vegetable production. So, market for the natural product these uh, bio inputs will also increase. It's so, along with the organic food products market for the organic inputs is also growing. Lot many people have started venturing into entrepreneurship in producing uh, this uh, compost, vermicompost or bio fertilizers or bio inputs, bio pesticide that market is also slowly, slowly growing up. So, if you look at now future looks more green and it we can expect that there will be healthier uh, human life, there is be welfare oriented animal production by adopting organic production practices. So, we have to, we have to and then it is based now, it is very knowledge intensive, it is not that uh, seeds when we have sown, how we have done and what kind of uh, inputs we have used in that farm, we have to keep a proper record of that, uh, that production practice. So, how it has been done and then the certification agency verify it that how it is and then how it has been grown and then they audit it and they look into and they verify. So, that we have to see that we have to make ourselves aware about the organic production practices or organic animal production practices, how it is produced, we have to look into, take into consideration all these guidelines. So, we have to be very much aware about these guidelines in order to produce certified organic products, so that we can market it as a certified organic product with the proper logo or the certification agency and giving all the details. If suppose somebody want to see that how you have produced it, if that information should be available and then generally it is documentation is as I said earlier, it was, it should be traceable. It is all documented on the computer system and the all traceability from farm to folk, it is well established in organic systems. What anybody is eating that, he should be assured that yes, he is eating healthy product which has been produced as per the organic prescribed guidelines and standards and the product conforms to the uh, organic standards, it is to be and verified by a certification agency. Say for example, a produce is being produced in uh, one state for example, in Uttar Pradesh and then being consumed in Kerala. So, the consumer may not be aware about because of the distance, but because of the logo in the food products that it is certified organic and that will win the confidence of the consumer, yes, it is the product he was looking for that it is assurance, it gives the assurance that it is organic product and it is properly verified. So, government is uh, also giving a big support to organic production in India and many other countries they are supporting organic agriculture and that may, mainly uh, thinking about the adverse effect of the chemicals on the environment, adverse effect of the chemicals on the human health, adverse effect of the chemicals on animal health, keeping all this mind. The, the organic standards have been developed, how the chemicals can be reduced in agriculture. This is being emphasized at the international level, at the national level, at the local level, at every level, at the consumer's level. There is a big worry because of the chemicals. So, chemical need to be reduced. If chemical need to be reduced, we have to have the alternative and these alternatives have to be very effective also. That is why research agencies are also working on making these, uh, these alternative as efficient because chemical agriculture could lead to many fold increase in the food production. So, food production we can also not afford drastic reduction in the food production that is why the alternative uh, fertilizers or inputs being used in agriculture being the uh, organic production, it should be also effective in improving the crop productivity. It should not reduce, some people say that there will be as equally 
more uh, production in organic after two, two, three initial years of the less production and it can be yield can be maintained at par with the chemical uh, chemical agriculture by giving the bio inputs because of the by bio inputs and bio bio uh, uh, enhancers. Uh, this uh, crop productivity can be improved and then this uh, because chemicals are not there it does not mean that production cannot be enhanced there are the alternatives available we have to do more research on that alternatives how these alternatives can be effective so we have to now look for the making organic agriculture sustainable so that the production level doesn't go down much and it, it should be uh, production should be adequate enough to feed human beings also, also to animals and animals should be fed well organic organic diets organic feed and fodder for animals and that will come from the organic farms which are which produce without chemicals pesticides and all these kind of things that can be reduced that can be reduced and there is strong possibility that organic agriculture will be more more and more it will be it will come into practice right now people say that it is only for niche market for the select group of consumers who are able to export uh, who are uh, able to afford more prices of the organic products but slowly as the organic production will go up the prices of the organic products will come down which will be afforded by many more consumers so we see that consumers will grow in number and the producer will grow in number and then the future there looks be it appears to be broad bright future for organic agriculture so we are going to see more and more organic products self in the shopping malls in the market it is available and the prices has not gone up so much for the organic products the prices will come down more consumer and more consumer consuming organic food would mean that less health expenses people will be healthier animals will be healthier soil will be healthier climate will be healthier there will be less pollution and people will be eating good food healthier food and then their health will be good and then total environment good the longevity will go up and the environment will be less polluted uh, leading to the good health to the human as well as animal health uh, animal health so we see that now more people are working and researching on the methods to alter alternatives how to produce more with the less of the inputs less dependent on the market so we have to buy and be on farm recycling of the resources will help so as i said earlier circulatory practices the soil health we have to focus give maximum attention to the soil health so we have to make our soil healthy if soil is healthy so and the, the, the so the plant will be healthier because the that plant will grow in this healthy soil it will it will increase the vitality of the plant and the plant if it is healthier it will be consumed by human beings and also by the animals animal will be healthier and it will give an healthier products milk meat or eggs will be healthier and also it will give dung a manure which will be turned into manure we can make uh, burmi manure burmi compost cow, cow dung manure cattle manure and that manure, manure will go back to the soil and it will make soil healthy let us summarize what I spoke so far. As I said in the beginning, life evolved out of natural process. Everything was nat uh, natural and what was available in the nature that was being consumed by animals as well as by human beings. And we call this phase hunting gathering as a way of life. Then the process of settling down started, then people started growing crops and raising livestock and then to grow crops and livestock. So, and then human population uh, increased to meet the requirements of the increasing human population, people started giving interventions. Earlier it was natural intervention, they went for the chemical alternatives. So, chemical fertilizers started being used and the weedy side, pesticide they were used and the production, agriculture production, animal production went up very high, many fold and then we became food secure. Once we became food secure, then people started thinking about adverse effect of the, these chemicals into human life or animal life. So then they started thinking what are the animal, the, uh, these alternatives. Then these alternatives were generally bio fertilizers and then also replacing this one and the soil enhancers by the natural interventions. Then organic agriculture came into being because of this person. 
So, organic agriculture has defined that chemicals are largely affected and this uh, uh, location specific, site specific, agronomic and other practices are used, chemicals are not used into this practice. There are four principles of organic agriculture, principle of health, principle of ecology, principle of fairness and principle of care, these are followed into organic systems. So, organic animal husbandry same way synthetic uh, drugs and the feed additives and synthetic inputs are not giving and organic farming is done as per the written standards and documents and there are the guide guidelines for these. So, these are if you look at the circulatory practice soil is good, plant grow well, it is eaten by animal human and then they give cow dung or manure that goes into the soil, it makes soil healthier. Quality, climate, nutrition, safety, efficiency, animal welfare, these are the requirements which are paid attention to and our farmers have to compete with the farmers of other countries, advanced countries or they are exporting. We have to have our own healthy food produced within the country. So, organic products are properly labeled and then they are uh, the, all the, it, it gives the information about the date of manufacture, date of expiry and who has produced it, who has certified it and then it, 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 it wins the confidence of the consumers. So, you, you look at the shopping malls are flooded with organic products everywhere we go in the western countries or within the country if you look at. So, they are these and then all developed country what they have done already our country producers are also equally producing in that way. So, organic agriculture is for healthy for produced food items are devoid of harmful chemicals and no harmful residues are there. So, no harmful chemicals in food chain is good for human animal health and the environment. So, human health is protected, animal health is protected and the environment is protected when we are producing organic food and when it is we are consuming organic foods. So, healthier life means less expenses on health care. So, we you we might have seen in recent times our health expenditure is going up and we are suffering from more disease and more uh, health uh, ailments are there and our health expenses medicine and all this is increasing. So, that mainly there could be several other factors, but one of the main factor for our adverse health, uh, adverse health, bad health is the food we consume mostly laced with the chemicals. So, we have to look into alternatives and organic or, uh, products are generally for devoid of the chemicals. So, if they are not chemicals uh, we are consuming through our food, so we can be healthy, so our health expenditure will go down. Reduce ground water pollution, soil degradation and good air quality. So, we need to reduce the ground water pollution because our water bodies are polluted. So, with this polluted water if you consume somehow that affects our health. Soil is degraded because of the chemical use especially fertilizers were used. So, nitrogen fertilizers and they were applied and then it degraded our, degraded our soil. So, soil started became hungry, uh, hungry and then they started being more they were demanding more and more chemical fertilizer. So, as we used to earlier 100 kg now 3, 4 times, 7 times, 5 times. So, then it is increasing the uh, chemicals uh, requirement of the soil and that is further degrading the soil. And when we are using these chemicals into our crops in agriculture production, so that is also deter uh, air quality is getting deteriorated and it is affecting. Uh, air quality and air quality affected pollution, uh, environment affected, water affected, it means that all these we use in our own for our own consumption. We need all these three and that it goes inside our body or even the animal animals body when they are consumed and they become sick and this affects and then adverse effect and they find it very difficult to live well with these chemicals in the environment, these chemicals in the food products. So, our health get affected. So, we have to see that how we can improve the production and productivity of the crops without using these chemicals. For that organic agriculture methods are being devised on alternative fertilizers are being uh, devised. We call them bio fertilizers, bio inputs, bio pesticides. These are being applied in the crops. So, that the ground po water pollution is reduced soil degradation is be avoided and air quality is improved. So, that all with this kind of move our healthier we live, we start living healthier life. So, our healthier life means less expenses on this one and it is a good for environment totally and then it is good and the animal are raised in a welfare, uh, in a animal welfare is taken care into organic production system. So, there are standard which ensure that animals are raised in a welfare oriented manner. So, we look we cannot afford to be cruel to animals also because in the part of the ecosystem. So, we are dependent on with the plants, we are dependent on animals, we are dependent on the natural uh, environment. 
So, we are also when we are taking something from an environment, we have to give something positive contribute to the environment, we can contribute best by applying less chemicals into agriculture. So, we have to see that we organic production, how it can contribute in a better way to environment, to our animal production, so and then to our own human health. So, so I hope that what I talked about organic agriculture, what it is, why we are for going for organic agriculture. So, I, I believe that you must have understood it and so, so you may like to follow some of the organic agriculture practices in your own uh, production systems and you may also think of consuming more of organic product. So, with this hope, I thank you. Thank you very much for this.